Hi everybody, welcome back to another math lesson with Mr. Oldenborg. Today, we are finishing up our unit on volume with problems using volume. We had a lot of real world problems going on here. We liked them. Volume's huge in the real world, kids. It's a skill you're definitely gonna need to know. This one affected our school a couple years ago. The whole text that went on with it said something like that this school was looking to get air conditioning put in it. And they needed to know the volume, so they needed to know how much AC they needed to pump in. We literally did that in this building two years ago. Real hard problems. So what do I know? I know that I need to separate my figures into two. I'll have an A. I'll have a B. I'll identify my A, because remember, volume equals length. Oh, it never goes long. Width and a height. My length is my horizontal. My height is my vertical. And my width is always my diagonal. You will always need all three. So A will equal 50 times 50 times 10. And just to do it mentally, 50 times 50, well, 5 times 5 is 25 with two zeros, that would be 2,500 times 10, which is another zero, 25,000 cubic meters. B, I have some gross numbers. I have a length, a width, and a height, 75, 57, and 14 meters. Now, Here's the deal. Those are very unkind numbers, right? Sure, Mr. Wallenberg, I know. I keep the 75 to the end, and it's not because it's the largest number. It has a five in the ones, and multiplying by five is easy to me. So I'm gonna save that for when I'm gonna have a larger number, just to make my life a little easier. So here we go. Let's take 57, we'll multiply it by 14. Couple of things I wanna review here. First, where is the stupid pointer? I'm hitting the pointer. It's not coming up. All right. So we're always going to start with the ones at the bottom. And I'm going to do 4 times 7. Then I'm going to do 4 times 5. So 4 times 7 is 28. Oh, no. Hold on one sec. Sorry, everybody. Teachers need help. All right. So seven, 4 times 7 was 28. Bring over the 2. That is now two tens. 4 times 5 is 20, plus 2 is 22. A lot of you have been making the error of doing the 2 up here and then doing 4 times 5 is 20, not adding the 2 and putting 20 here. It's there. Look at it. Make sure you don't get tired in problems. Always check everything. Now I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to put my placeholder because this is the other place you guys make mistakes. I cannot start multiplying this 1 by the 7 until I have taken care of the 1's place. I need a 1's place placeholder to say it's okay to go to the 10's. You can skip me now. It's all right. Go to the 1. And now we're there. So, 1 times 7 is 7. 1 times 5 is 5 because anything times 1 is itself. We do our addition. I get 798, but we're not finished. We still got to deal with the 75. So now I have 798 times 75. Yuck! But we can do this. Again, it's the same exact procedure. The ones times everything, placeholder. The tens times everything. And don't be one of those kids that starts at 7 times 9. You got to go all the way back to the beginning. All the way to the 8. Here we go. 5 times 8 is 40. Got 45 plus 4 is 49. 35 plus, nine, uh, plus 4 is 39. I'm getting ahead of myself there. Change my color. Placeholder. Cross these out so I don't get confused. 7 times 8 is 56. 63 plus 5 is 68. Hold on. Six, yeah, I'm good. 6. 49 plus 6. 55. Notice, I also kept my place values neat and lined up so I know exactly what's going on. I am not worried about making a mistake with my place values lined up by adding a 10 to a 1s or a 100s to a 10s, something like that, because that's going to throw everything off. So what do I have here? 
Well, I have 59,850 meters to the third power. Now, we've done a lot of work, but we're still not finished. I still have to take B and add it to A. Right here, right here. So the total is going to be 84,850 meters cubed. That's the entire volume for this school. And that's how much air supply you're going to have to blow in at once. So it's important that we know this because otherwise, you know, you might get some warm spots. You might get some bitter cold spots. You need to know how much has got to be in. Real world issues. Another real world issue. Let's, uh, let's cage some birds. The reason I left this here is because of two points. One, I want to introduce finding a missing value. And second, sometimes when you're doing all these volume problems, the question isn't about volume in the end anyway. This one's about birds. So this nature center has this bird cage. They want to know the volume because they want to know how many birds they can stick in if every bird needs 10 cubic feet of space. So here, your answer isn't, hey, what's a volume? You need the volume to then divide it and figure out how many birds you can stick in there. So I'm going to separate this into two Oh, that is terrible. I'm going to do that again. It's probably not going to be much better, kids. All right, maybe a little better. I have an A unit. I have a B unit. Now, this is hard to see because you know, of all the 3D stuff. It's not uh, nice and easy. Let's look at the B unit first. And the reason that we look at the B unit first is because I have my height right in front. I have my length right in front and my width. Those three values are right there. So I know B is going to be 8 times 3 times 14. My A unit, I have my length. That's 10. I do have a height because the height's the same everywhere. All right? This line, this blue line, is going to match this red line. They're the same thing. So I do have my height of 8. But what I'm missing is right here. I'm missing my width. This 4 here is not the width. That 4 is pointing, let me draw it in purple, here. And the reason being is because 10 plus 4 is 14. I'm concerned with that blue line right here. What I do have is I have a total width. I see 6. If I go back to A, I see that I used three feet. Well, if I have a total and I used three, that should tell me what I'm missing. Now, after I do all this math to save time and the sake of this video's time length, I get 576 cubic feet. It's up at the top. Remember, my question is not what's the total volume. It's how many birds can I stick in this cage? Well, we said, actually, I wanted to move that over. We said that each bird takes up 10 cubic feet. So if I'm thinking of a problem to write, I know I have this many cubic feet. And if I divide that by how much space each bird needs, I should be fine. Things to remember about dividing by 10. First of all, you pretty much get rid of a 1's value. I will be able to fit 57 birds in there. Oh, how do you know, Mr. Oldenborg? Great question. I'm glad you asked. There's a whole number. Here's a decimal point. We don't usually write the decimal point unless we have a decimal number. But in this case, I'm going to have it because it always lives after the 1's. When we divide by 10, we're shifting our numbers to the right which means our decimal, even though the decimal never really moves, to the left, how many places? One. So if I take that decimal, I bring it over here, my new one's place is a seven. So I'm gonna be able to fit in 57 whole birds. And people are gonna say, well, Mr. O, what about the six-tenths of a bird left? Kids, if you have six-tenths of a bird, it's not alive. It, it, it can't be, it's not like, you know, you could just take a bird and fling it in there, it doesn't work. 
Uh, so what we're going to do is we're just going to leave that space. You got to think about reasonableness. All right, we can fit 57 birds in there comfortably, but the minute I put 58 in, they're not going to have 10 cubic feet anymore. That's not a good thing because it breaks the rule. So it's better to have a little more room than a little less. It also helps to have birds that are alive versus birds that aren't. All right, love this question because I told you you could break things up any way you want, right? Right. We had to find the volume here. We also had to find a missing um, measurement. When I said you could break things up any way you wanted, I really mean that because no matter how you're gonna break it up, you're going to get the same answer. However, if I'm thinking about this in the real world, kids, this china cabinet here, some people broke it up like this, which is fine for figuring things out. But I don't know about you, but being an adult, I know that if I were to cut a sliding draw in half, it's never going to line up and work correctly again. If you've ever installed furniture, and I told you this today in class, when you get a hutch or a dresser or a china cabinet like this, it's always cut like this because you put the top on top of the bottom. And then you secure it with some railing behind it and some screws. So, with that being said, if I'm looking at reality, I'm cutting it like this. All right, so unit A has all three measurements I need. 12 times two equals 24. Sweet, that was easy. But then I get to B. Now B, I have my width. I know my width is one. I know my length is four because this line is the same as this line, and this line, and this line, and that line. What I don't know is this, my height. So I have to use the rest of the information to help me figure it out. Well, I know the total here is seven. I used three. Seven minus three is four. Therefore, the height is going to be four. Then, I combine the two values, and I make sure that I am in cubic feet, because it says feet, I double check, and three dimensions, three units. Buildings, gotta love buildings. This was a beast. So, and not so much because the concept was hard, but the multiplication was a little bit, right? Right. So, here, let's go A, let's go B. B, I have everything again. I have a length, a height, and a width. 50 times 30 times 40. A, Let's go pink, why not? I have a width and I have a height. But I'm missing my length, I have no clue. What do I know? I know the entire length is 75. I know I used 40. 75 minus 40 is 35. Now, I'm going to skip, uh, for the sake of time, all the multiplication because, again, you would multiply each and combine those values and make sure your answer is in feet cubed, all right? I don't want this video to be 20-something minutes long. But uh, the big point I wanted to make was how to find the missing value. Finally, sometimes you don't get a picture. Sometimes you have to read. Let's talk about keywords. A nature center has a fish tank shaped like a rectangular prism. I'm not even going to draw it. It measures six feet long. Oh, isn't that a length? Long, right? Sure. It measures four feet wide. Oh, W, right, right. Yeah, yeah, look at these letters. They work. I know. And four feet high. Oh, boy, look at that. That is the worst looking nature I've ever seen in my life. Oh, my God, it's getting worse. Oh, boy. You look like Harold in the purple crayons writing this. All right. 
So, it can be stocked safely with three small fish in each cubic foot of water. One fish. Three cubic feet. So now they're giving me a unit rate. Oh. So, first things first, let's figure out the volume of this tank. Well, six times four is 24. 24 times four, wow, the wind is crazy outside. 16, eight, nine, I have 96 cubic feet. If I have 96 cubic feet, I can then divide it by three feet for each fish. Three goes into nine, three times, nothing left over. Three goes into six twice, nothing left over. I can get 32 fish in that tank. And that's a good thing to know because when you put too many fish in a tank, it gets over nitrates. And what happens then? And that's from, you know, I'm going to the bathroom. They all die. Water gets too acidic, can't keep the pH level good, dead. Dead, do not overpopulate your fish tank. It's better to have less than more because at least they'll be alive, like those birds. All right, guys, I hope this helped you a lot. I managed to do it a lot faster than I thought I was going to. Way to skip multiplication.